what's up? It's Mr. Young. And it's foreign in the building. How are you, Bart Bart? I am doing great. I see somebody brought out the guns today. After oh, no, no, SAF no, no, no. Day, you're feeling in the mood, is it, bro? No, no, I'm wearing my army singlet because ah, yes. uh, first first of all, I was involved in SAF Day for some reason. Mm. Uh, I had I had to work. And uh and secondly, because I've been I've been going to camp so much these last mm. couple of weeks for rehearsals. Right. Uh, right. I decided to, I decided to wrap the army and wear back my singlet. Very which nice. Which I haven't worn in seven years. <laughs> Thank and God it fits. Yes. <laughs> Now you can see all the bulging muscles bulging out of that singular of yours. Bro, Speaking of upper, which, upper body bulging muscle, the lower body bulging something else. <laughs> That's why you can't see. Uh, you, you mean the uh, thighs, right? That's what you mean. Not not any other bulge. Bro, bro show business, bro. Show business. Okay, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, meanwhile, business I'm, at the top. Right. Party below. I am wrapping the <laughs> kick to the gut shirt, which I have to say after uh, CB, right? All of a mm. sudden became a bit tighter. No, I don't know why. <laughs> Hey, you'll be working out <laughs> lah, bro. No, no, no. See, I haven't because, I, you know, I've been a little bit more busy with work and also I do a gaming stream on my Facebook page, right? Yeah, bro. Uh, FB.gg slash Mr. Young 98, by the way. If you like to watch people play video games, come check out my stream. Cheap plug, cheap plug, cheap plug. Mr. Young, you're the busiest man in sports entertainment in Singapore. Right <laughs> no, I'm Two not. Two podcasts on top of your daily DJ job right now, like yeah. games, what? Facebook streamer, game yeah. streamer. Well, you know what it is, right? I one day decided, okay, I'm going to play the game anyway. I might mm -hmm. as well slap a camera on me and make content. Because at the end of the day, it's all about content these days, right? And getting out there and being relevant. So Yeah, yeah, that's true. I will have to admit though, it's been quite a challenge because usually when I play game, uh, I play quiet one. No? Like horror game, action game. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. You, you know, like you're just <laughs> seeing it intense, right? But then now with the camera on you, uh, it's like you have to like, narrate the shit. Oh my god, what's going on? And then be like very big and extra la. Yeah, I, I get what you very mean. Different. I mean like, it's, it's weird. Like if, if you were to ask me to like strap a webcam in my room, right? Mm. Um, I'll get very, very conscious la. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you feel like you have to perform, <laughs> right? Ah, uh, yes. That's yeah. why all these webcam people la. <laughs> webcam uh, I'm not people. I'm not talking about webcam girls. I'm talking about people <laughs> on webcam all the time. <laughs> Vloggers. They, they, uh, you know, they naturally have this energy that suddenly makes yeah. them feel like, wow, interesting to talk to. Okay, I think maybe that's why. Yeah, well, I mean, like, that's why I always believe reality TV shows are a bit, it's not reality in that yeah. people aren't like that. They know the cameras are on them. That's why they, oh, you know, try to be bigger and louder and more uh, nonsensical than usual. Bro, try to put a camera on a super antisocial or introverted guy. It's just uh, two hours or they're just being quiet and just coding. Hey, <laughs> there's a market, forget that, you know, like people watch other people studying. So there is a market for that, but... Uh, you know, people, uh, people are just weird. People, people are, just are weird. people are weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, we we didn't come here to talk about me or you. We came to talk about wrestling. So let's do exactly that. And first thing I saw this morning, I don't know why. Yeah. I think it's an Instagram algorithm, right? But every morning, I'm the first thing I see in my Instagram feed is a picture from Alexa Bliss. I don't know why her Instagram photos always pop up in the morning for me. So it's like, good morning. You know, you know what? Like, you, know, you know. You know what it is, bro? What? Um, basically, Instagram knows all about your fantasies. Bro. Hey, not fantasies, bro. <coughs> Who, which wrestlers I enjoy interacting with and liking their photos and stuff like that. Oh, is I, it? I think I must like her photos so much that Instagrams are always pushing her feet to <laughs> the top of my page. Anyway, my point is this morning when I woke up, there was a picture of her and Ryan Cabrera and now they've become quite open with their relationship, mm, right? They've been quite low-key for a while, right? Yes, but now it's out there. Um, okay, and, you know, congratulations to Alexa Bliss. You know, it takes a lot to come out with a relationship like that, especially with her fame and notoriety. So many people love her, like her, whatever, fantasize about her. Um, <laughs> it, it definitely takes a lot to come out with a relationship like that. So congratulations to her. I'm very happy. Bro, it's like the the best crossover of like the 2000s kids, bro. Oh, oh I, yeah. I, I, I was an MTV boy, like watching yeah. PRL maybe in early 2000s. Ryan Cabrera's True was like yeah. the biggest deal ever, right? But you know what's a little bit weird, right? You look at mm. Alexa Bliss, 4 point something million followers. Ryan Cabrera, like 200,000. Like... Okay, to be fair, his fame came in 2004 to Way, like what? Yeah. Two, three years. Way that. before... Instagram was a thing, right? And, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I have a Ryan but, Cabrera story, bro. Oh, shit. You've met him? Yes, I have. 
He was in oh, Singapore one time. This was okay. at the height of okay, maybe after True, you know, like he came to Singapore to do performances, that kind of Around thing, right? Period, yeah. And uh, we were at the club, Jackie and I. I think they wanted to introduce us DJs to him. Mm. And you know what I noticed about uh, Ryan? What's up? And okay, this is not to swan him or say what lah, right? Um, maybe he was a younger person then. Maybe his priorities were different then. You know, maybe he's matured now, but. I distinctly remember not getting a very good vibe from him because whenever he was introduced to girls, he would be super like, hey, like smiley and flirty. Uh, but when like the record execs would introduce guys to him, he'd be like, like, bochap, like, don't, like, oh, okay, yeah, just, like, I'm shaking your hand just because I have to, but then like after that, immediately like, eh, okay, turn over to the girls and chat with them instead. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit, I didn't have a very good impression of him, but like I said, that could be a long time ago. He could be a completely different person mm -hmm. now and, you know. Bro, the only way we can know for sure whether he's changed, let's see how if he interacts with Mike Rome on Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. If he's a bro bro with Mike Rome and mm. all the other people in wrestling, like all the dudes are, yeah. then okay, he's a cool guy. And, and because Mike Rome is such good friends with Alexa Bliss, that's why you mentioned Mike Rome, right? Because they, yeah, they yeah. every time they travel, they're always like joking around together. 100% the, the, the platonic. Their the most recent uh, Instagram uh, photos, right? They've been talking about how crappy <laughs> the DC superheroes cafe is in Singapore. It's and such so a bad... It's closed down. Yeah, it's such a bad... <laughs> A restaurant though, like I mean, they are not it's just wrong. O o overpriced is one thing, but no, 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 bro, it just doesn't taste good. Yeah, it's not that it's overpriced. If it's overpriced and tastes good, it's okay, dude. Like Carl's Jr. is better, McDonald's is better. Their burgers just suck just because they got the license to Superman and Wonder Woman, but so their food is just garbage. Presentation wise, ten out of ten. Yeah, but taste wise, like robot, bro. It's you know what it's like. It's like. I can hear the <laughs> motorcycle going by, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's like a Young Bucks match. Oh! Oh, we have started. We I'm, have started. What? I'm many, kidding. Minutes in? Huh? Five minutes in? Five minutes in. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like that restaurant, no. Cannot make it lah. But yeah, no, but, but, I'm genuinely but happy I, for Alexa Bliss. And I hope that, like you said, right? Right? The, mm -hmm. Cabrera and Mike Rome, if they can get along, yeah, that means that he's an all right dude. If he <laughs> starts getting all shady with Mike Rome, then it's like, okay, I don't know about that then. I mean, I mean, I mean to be fair, there's been a lot of uh, shady men doing shady things. And we've talked about it. We touched about that topic last <sighs> week. Yeah. And uh, we want to thank everyone who kind of like reached out to us and, you know, said that, you know, they... They, they really appreciated the conversations that we had. We tried to be as mature and as objective as possible and try to... Oh, <laughs> oh I think we lost for a second. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Where are you? Where? KO! Foreign got hit with the knockout punch and down he goes. Bro, One, I got, I got kicked in the gut, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. I think we should keep that. It's quite fun. <laughs> I hope. I, okay, you know what we need to do? We need a GoFundMe to get foreign uh, a handphone stand or something to hold up your <laughs> shit. Okay, first of all, guys, uh, my birthday is late October. If anyone <laughs> wants to buy for me uh, a podcast mic like Mr. Young <laughs> set up, that will be great. Uh, you know, secondly, if uh, you know, I can faster get my BT or I can get my own place, that will be great oh, as well. Shit. So, please, whoever that is voting in these coming elections, please huh? think about the young Young couples that's getting married, uh, we need more affordable housing. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a very good point. But uh, what were we talking about? Uh? No, we were talking about speaking out movement. I know it was a very, oh, that it was was... A very, very low moral topic, but then you know, I had to like, yeah. lighten the mood up a bit. Well, yeah, exactly. Thank you, bro. I know you did that on purpose. You comedian, of course, of course. you. Of course. Um, yeah, I'm glad we spoke out about it and I'm glad all these stories have come out. I mean, uh, like we've mentioned last week, you know, we got in touch with a couple of the uh, regional wrestlers who were involved, who had gone through things like that. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we spoke to them on Instagram and whenever, yep. like we said, whenever they are ready to tell their story on the show, this platform is open to them. In the meantime, of course, let them heal, let them... Um, you know, spend some yeah. time to I, digest what has gone on because kind of like yeah. let it die down a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, always keep it at the top of your mind. Like, if we see stuff mm. like that, we shouldn't let it happen. And I mean, yeah. a bit of fallout. I don't know if it's fallout from this or what. Because okay, you know how SPW came out and said they are, you know, taking a stand against this, right? Yep. And then, um, okay, 
Alex, of course, was released. Um, Eurasian Dragon, Mighty Mighty, we heard about their releases as well. Now, yep. if, of course, you're wondering why, go and ask them yourselves. They, said, they have said they're open to questions on their social media platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you saw, though, uh, Tiberian, also Mr. Teo Holmes, Archibald Ignatius, have yep. uh, left SPW as well, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Kyle Black, the trickster. Kyle Black, yeah, trickster. He, yeah, I just saw it this afternoon. I don't know if he just announced it, but I saw it. He says that he has uh, left SPW as well. Let me... Uh... Really? What happened, bro? No, I'm so shocked by Carl Black's departure, man, that my phone dropped. <laughs> I know, he, he's doing magic on you, bro. Wait, but that, that's pretty big news, bro. Carl Black, so that means, is it the end of the social misfits or is it just going to be him? I... I, I, think, I think it's just him. Okay, let me read you his statement on Facebook. Huh? After okay. long and careful consideration, it is with a heavy heart that I am reluctantly announcing that I am parting ways with SPW. I'm okay. a wrestling fan who was allowed to live my dreams of being a professional wrestler through SPW. However, due to personal reasons, I've decided that it is time for me to leave. Um, I wish SPW the best in their future endeavors. So, um, it is not clear why he's leaving. Perhaps, you know, it's something to do, like you said, with uh, personal issues. But let's yep. not jump to conclusions. I think if you have any questions, you can ask him. Um, I mean, I'm very curious to see, honestly, how mm. SBW is going to bounce back from this. Because it's like a mass exodus of a lot of their very, very popular uh, wrestlers. You know, mm. people with fan bases. Yeah. We, know, we know all about, you know, uh, the Dragon, the Mighty Dragon family. We know... Trickster has been, especially the last one year, he came from a nobody. Remember, we were there for his very first match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's gained so much popularity in the in the last year and a half, perhaps, mm, you know. Mm. It's going to be very interesting to see where they bounce back next. First of all, you know, they, they are all wrestlers. Wrestlers are, in a way, independent contractors, right? Yes. So, may, might they turn up in other promotions? Mm -hmm. Might they stop wrestling all together, all yeah. the way, all together. Is uh, there's a lot of question marks. It's very scary for us because you know, for for us doing this podcast, uh, uh, promotions, local promotions like SPW and Grapple Max are very important. Um, in terms of like the ecosystem of wrestling here in Singapore. Yeah, man. And and without them, um, uh, existing, like yeah, we can still talk about the WWE. We can still talk about AEW. Mm. But like the local connection will be, you know, kind of kind of severe. So it, it's a it's a Pretty tough time, I think, for for yes, if, especially if you're in the local wrestling industry with yeah. all the fallout that's been going on. Mm -hmm. Well, and not only that, of course, there are no shows happening as well. You know, there were a couple of shows that were announced. It was supposed to be a big year this year, man. Like Grapple Max had so many shows announced. Remember, we saw the timeline. They yeah. made it look like a, a Marvel Avengers. Cinematic <laughs> Universe release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, huge timeline. SPW also had shows uh, mm -hmm. lined up, but all out the window and who knows when these shows are going to come back, you know, might be next year. In fact, this year might be no local wrestling at all. So. Yeah. And, and it all comes back to COVID-19, right? Yeah. And we've, we've been looking at uh, seeing all these stories coming out from WWE. Mm. Apparently, their handling or mishandling of this situation <sighs> has been more disastrous than we thought. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? And, you know, wherever in the world, because we're putting this up on uh, YouTube now and also, you know, anyone can listen to this from anywhere in the world, right? But mm -hmm. can we agree that the US handling of coronavirus has been not ideal? It's not yeah. the best. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're, we're just speaking facts, bro. Like, the number of cases has been on a massive rise compared to yeah. the rest of the world. I mean, you see these scenes and I'm sure this is not uh, everybody everywhere, but... You've seen these scenes online on the news of people gathering, going to the beach, having parties, going around without... All the Karens without masks. Yeah, yeah. All the Karens getting angry at people who ask them to Correct. put on a mask. Like, um, and, why and, do you think and, there's a rise, guys? Yeah, and the timing, I mean, uh, nothing against the Black Lives Matter. It's, it's a great movement and oh. it's definitely needed. But the trigger, the timing, the outrage, all these protests, it was just bad timing for it to happen during the pandemic. Definitely, it led... Yeah. You know, to, to all of this rising. Uh, my biggest fear right now, right, is... Okay, for, for example, for me, I'm also a football fan. I'm a huge Liverpool fan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and Congrats when, then. Yeah, thank you so much. Champions. But ca can you imagine my heartache? We were supposed to win the title probably three months ago. Yeah. We were on par to have the earliest uh, victory of uh, EPL title ever in March. We yeah. were about to wrap up the title. And then, all of a sudden, you know, the league shut down. 
no one took it seriously. They were still thinking about having fans in the uh, in the stadiums and all that. But when one high profile football manager, I think Chelsea's Frank Lampard, you have heard his name, mm-hmm. Frank Lampard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he 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 was the first high profile manager from the EPL that got COVID nineteen. Oh, the it moment, was Frank Lampard. Ah? Yeah, Frank Lampard yeah. from Chelsea. Yes. So the moment he uh, and Mikel Arteta, mm. Mikel Arteta also another one from Arsenal. Mm. So when all these uh, people got the virus, straight away they closed down, they shut it down, yeah. no questions asked, yeah. and everyone agreed we do not want to jeopardize the safeties of these high-profile uh, football managers, that football names that everyone knows, you know. Yeah. But now WWE has people like Renee Young, uh, you know, Kayla Braxton, um, the agents Jamie Noble, all these people. Yes, Jamie Noble has also you, been diagnosed. Jamie Noble has coronavirus. <laughs> God damn. Maybe Man, all the all the sodden people. Uh, I, I love like he he was one of my low key favorite characters back in the day. Jamie Noble when he was playing <laughs> that whole you know like hit southern. He, he, he has the corona, media, bro. The cor- coronavirus. I <laughs> oh, love them. Okay, oh, but yeah. it, I mean it's crazy because okay they may they may not be like a high tier name. But these are recognizable names among wrestling fans. Yeah, and okay, not only that, right? One's an agent, so he obviously interacts with a lot of the talent, right? Mm-hmm. Renee Young is the interviewer. She interacts with a lot. Kayla Braxton is well. I didn't know uh, Kayla Braxton gonna as well. The, wait, the worst part about Kayla Braxton, bro, she had the virus back in March. She recovered. What? And she got it again. Oh my god! So they they kept it pretty quiet. So right now there's this oh, uh dear. there's this huge uh what do you call it, like note is being passed around, like huge memo from WWE saying yeah. that they are not supposed to leak out any more names. Mm. Uh, those people who release their names, it, they was released on their own accord. WWE never put out a statement and say, this person, this person, this person has the virus. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, and this is the craziest thing. This is the part where it really pisses me off, you know, as a wrestling fan. As a human being, mm. the WWE wrestlers themselves, they are actually checking the dirt sheets to find out who has the virus. Because internally, nobody is telling them anything. Right. So, well, well, that's not cool, man. Like, you know, for all the shitty things that we claim or we see or we hear that uh, the company does, this might be the shittiest. Yeah. Just because Be- you want to put out a product. Yeah, when, when they say they put out all these statements saying like, you know, the, the, the health and the safety of our, or our employees are the most important thing. Mm. It's bullshit. It's been yeah. proven right now, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's why, like, I guess guys like um, Sami Zayn, like uh, Roman Reigns, they're smart yep. to just say, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to stay at home. Forget it. I don't need this. Do you, do you see Kevin Owens putting out, like, a Twitter video? No. It's a very you... heartfelt Twitter video that he put out. Um, he was in his car. Mm. He was talking about how his uh, mother-in-law, mm. uh, so basically his mother-in-law's dad, so his wife's grandfather, right? Yeah. Uh, passed away due to COVID-19. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, his entire family directly is affected by, you know, his mm. wife's grandfather. And he said how the experience being, seeing his, his wife being unable to be present at, you know, the grandfather's own funeral, uh, watching him getting buried without any family members, watching him die alone in the hospital. Mm. Uh, and the only way they can see was through Zoom. You know, it's really heartbreaking, you know? Yeah, man. And and he was saying that, guys, you know, if there's a way to protect yourself by wearing a mask, please do it. Mm. And then you got wrestlers who have actually come out and said that it's bullshit not to wear a mask. Like, this is, I have the freedom to not wear a mask. Have you heard of it? Who? Who has come out people, to say it? People like Loki. Uh, fuck off, la, Loki. Where, <laughs> where, where is uh, he? Go yeah, pe- people like Austin Aries. Okay, yeah, fuck him. Like, so, yeah. who, who, where is he now? So, so all, all these very pretentious kind of statements that they put out on Twitter, you know, going yeah. against the fact that uh, I have the freedom to not wear a mask. Yeah. Your health is not my responsibility. This is the problem with these Americans having being too liberal and having so much. They care so much about their rights and yeah. amendments. Mm. And basically, they don't care about other people. They just care about themselves. Correct. It's a very selfish mentality. So, I mean, with all due respect to good Karens, but stop being Karens, all yeah. of you. Shit. Okay. And the last thing that I read, and this is a bit surprising, uh, one, one huge wrestler, one huge name actually uh, opposed the wearing of masks being mandatory in his state. Okay. And this is, the, this is the one that will disappoint a lot of fans. Oh, shit. 
It's Kane. It's got to be Kane. Kane, of all people, he doesn't want people to wear masks. Okay, so there was this one. Um, the, so the Knox County Health uh, Promotion Board, their own promotion board, right? Yeah. They, were, they, 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 they had a huge committee meeting and they had a huge discussion to pass a bill within the county mm. to, to, you know, to push through the mandatory wearing of masks. Yeah. And it was like an eight-man committee and it was voted seven to one. Mm. The one nay happens to be the mayor himself. So, it's a bit tough because, you know, the meme that has been going around on Facebook saying that yeah. this guy has been wearing a mask for 20 years yeah. and he hasn't complained. What about you? And then now the irony is that he voted against wearing a mask. I don't want to question or talk about his politics and all that. But you know that he is technically a libertarian and yeah. also he votes as a Republican. Yeah, but it, does, it shouldn't matter what your political party is. Mm-hmm. This is a matter of health and, and yep. life. And, you know, there is a pandemic, there is a virus going around. It shouldn't matter if you're libertarian, if you're democratic, if you are a Republican, whatever the hell you are. Mm -hmm. It's about protecting yourself and protecting other people. And that's why I I go back to how the Americans value their Second Amendment right so much. They value their freedom so much that if they had a choice between saving other people and saving their own freedom, I think they would choose the former. Saving their own freedom, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It is the yeah, it's the whole idea of if you give them one little bit, then they'll take more of your freedoms away. Then they'll take more. Then they'll take mm-hmm. more. Right? You know, that's always been the idea. Like, you, yeah. you, you just can't give them just a little bit because just any little bit you give them, it gives them room to wiggle for more. But then again, um, this is not like any other time in the world. There is a yeah. pandemic This is around. the challenge of our generation, bro. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be our great, but it's going to be a thing that, you know... So, um, yeah. No, I don't understand why it can't, and it is a sign of respect to other people to mask up so that if I have the damn thing, I won't give it to you. You know, funnily enough, uh, before the whole pandemic thing went off, I don't know if I told you this, right? You know, I was in, um, I was in Dubai, right? I went for for a vacation right before everything. And, and we had already heard some rumblings about what was this, uh, you know, coronavirus, something is going on. Or we had yep, heard yep. about it, right? So when I was there, uh, my wife and I, we wore masks just in case, especially in the airplane and coming to the hotel, right? Uh, we are, were already wearing masks. And let's not forget, it is a very common thing in Asian culture, in Japan, in Hong Kong, for people to wear masks anyway. I have a right? feeling I know where this is going, but please so, continue. We got to the hotel and as we were like, you know, heading to the lift and everything, all of a sudden we heard this guy yelling at us, hey, you don't need to wear a mask, you know? Yeah, that doesn't do it. And then I turned around and said, like, what the hell? So it was this, I, I guess it was an American from the accent because he didn't sound like he was British or anything, but I could be wrong. Maybe he's South African, whatever. But it was a very North American-ish accent, right? Mm-hmm. And he just went on this whole tirade of, you know, uh, people have said, doctors have said that mask does not blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm sitting there listening to this dude. I'm like, but it's not about that. It's about protecting other people. You know, it is a courtesy. Uh, And yeah, so eventually uh, we just kind of ignored the guy. Like, Mm -hmm. look, it is our choice to wear a mask. And that's the end of that. Why are you like trying to get in my face telling me to wear a mask or not? You know? do, you, do you like confront him to his face and say all that? No, no I didn't go and spit in his face, lah. Right? Oh, <laughs> I you just, you just spit in his face. <laughs> no, mas, huh? you don't have... <laughs> no, that would have been rude, and then I would have been the dick, right? No, yeah. we'll just let him be the dick. But yeah. yeah, it is this whole idea of you know, oh, this is my freedom not to wear a mask. How dare you impinge on it? It's that whole mentality of individualism versus collectivism and you know especially growing up where we do in singapore a lot of asian culture it's all about the collective right yeah and whereas in countries like the u.s it's about individual expression freedoms which Mm -hmm. is you know great for things like creativity and artistry so why do you think that uh, the u.s and the uk a lot of great music and artists come from there yeah is because they have the freedom to express themselves. Everyone is special and unique. Yep. But when it comes to a pandemic, maybe that approach doesn't work anymore. Can, can we just agree hmm? being too liberal doesn't work in solving a pandemic? I think yeah, yeah, that exactly. has been proven. This is the one time where everybody needs to shut the fuck up and listen and do the same thing. So in this yeah. case, 
this whole idea of, hey, let's all work to collectivism. The, the, the group is stronger together than the individual. This yep. is when this um, mentality or this philosophy works. In I a think, pandemic. you know, in, in any situation in life mm. where you're as a group of people, right? Yeah. If you're going to spend your entire time debating on what to do, nothing is going to get done. Yeah, yeah. If any, and already the buck stops with one person, no matter how much you agree, disagree. And this is very weird because it's a Vince McMahon approach. Mm. Once Vince McMahon makes up his mind and decides, you just have to go along with it. Yeah. But the thing and, is, there's no one that in, in the US that, that can just listen, especially not the guy on top. Wow, well, yeah, and see, that's a totally other different story altogether. They are all looking at this guy who's the figurehead. We know mm-hmm. who, you know, you know who we're talking about. And he's, yeah. you know, not wearing a mask. He's asking people mm. to drink bleach. It's like... Oh my God. He's the most misinformed. Uh, he's that guy, you know, the one that doesn't know anything about the exam, uh, but pretend talk. to know. Yeah, yeah. No, see, that's why I'm very confused. I'm very confused in that... You know, we always tell people, especially in radio and broadcast, right? When you speak, speak with confidence so that mm. even if, you know, you're not too sure, at least you don't come off as sounding like you don't know what the hell you're talking about, right? And I was just talking about this to somebody uh, recently in, in another interview on my other podcast. Oh, for the love of life, cheap plug. New episode <laughs> coming out soon. I, um, I got no plugs to cheap plea <laughs> pop. <laughs> I know. But yeah, we, we were talking it. about it and it's like, even if you are like the most learned and you know a, a lot of shit, right? Yep. If you come across as not confident and you're uh, hesitating, you yep. lose. You lose people. Whereas yep. Trump is the complete opposite. He is so full of himself. He, oh, I guess, you know, just threw the name out. He is so full of himself, right? <laughs> he knows exactly what, like, even if he's wrong, he'll just blah, 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 say yeah, it out yeah, yeah. He like he's right. It out. And so that is a very dangerous thing. Yeah. yeah. There's this quote that I've always heard come, come by all the time. Mm. It says, um, better, better keep quiet and people assume that you're an idiot than you open your mouth and it, you confirm it yourself. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day though, like I feel like it is not a case of oh, you should just, you know, go towards all individualism, me, 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 or go towards all collectivism. I feel like, like life, like everything in life, right? The answer is mm-hmm. somewhere in the, in the middle. It's, yeah, it's somewhere yeah. in the middle. So can't we all just meet somewhere in the middle? So the overall, I think, theme of this particular episode is with, with COVID-19 going on, with mm. WWE's disastrous handling of the, of the situation, should wrestling shut down for now. You know the WWE will not shut down. Yep. And it is quite obvious that they 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 want to put because okay, the second they shut down right AEW will go on unopposed. And AEW doesn't have this issue uh, that we know of for COVID, right? Know of yep. yet. And that's probably the reason why if you watch this week's um, episode of Fighter Fest, Dynamite, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, they push the John Moxley match, the title mm-hmm. match, John Moxley mm-hmm. against um, Brian Cage. Brian Cage. They pushed it to one week later, the 13th of July. Okay. It's supposed to be, I think next week, they pushed it one week after that at Fight for the Fallen. So apparently, in two weeks, the episode of Dynamite will be known as Fight for the Fallen. So every single episode in Dynamite right now is all themed la. I guess since they can't do pay-per-views or what. Well, they can do pay-per-view. I don't know. Maybe they just want to generate interest. Yeah, and perhaps. just doing a Dynamite is... You, you know what I really enjoyed this week though, watching uh, the show, Fighter Fest? Mm. You know how... Because we watch it on the Fight app because we're in Singapore, right? Yep. So we don't get the commercials. Every time there's a commercial break, you hear the damn Dynamite song on loop. It's so annoying. <laughs> Dynamite! Da, da, da. So, like, this week, there was no Dynamite song because it was just the Fighter Fest logo and, like, a bit of, like, different music. So I'm like, yes! Finally, I don't have to hear the damn song. The music is more, you know, calming. Like calming, yeah. Like, the lounge. Yeah, but, not like... Yeah. Da, 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 like, oh, God. Uh, as much as we agree how badly WWE has been managing this pandemic situation. Mm. I think AEW is doing the best in terms of the North American, uh, I think between the two. Uh, definitely the top, the most exemplary is still New Japan. Mm. You know, For me, they've only just started their shows. They really close it, close yeah. down the industry for the, top, for the last three months. Yeah. And I feel that 
they actually carry the responsibility of being the king of sports, the leader in you know in wrestling in yeah. the East, and they take that responsibility very seriously. And they've done it. They showed a great example of how to go about it. Well, it's like we just talked about, right? It's that mentality of... And the Japanese yeah. are very famous for this mentality of looking after everybody else. They are the ones who are always wearing the masks. Yeah. And it's just a bit of flu, last, they wear masks. Yeah, last time people always say like, oh, why is Japan so weird? Why do all these people wear masks? But what, what a lot of people don't realize, especially when you are uninformed, is that they're not protecting themselves. They're yeah. protecting others. Yeah. Them. The idea is I don't want to pass whatever flu or cold I have to you. That's why they wear the mask, right? Yeah. That's why this became a thing in Hong Kong as well because of SARS. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I, I guess we go back to that whole, like, why are you doing it? You're doing it because you want to be respectful to others. Whereas mm -hmm. maybe in the US or to the WWE, it's, it's something different, you know? And there's a lot of money on the line, bro. There's it's true. Lot of money. It's true. There's, there's a lot of television money. But me as a wrestling fan, and I'm sure you agree as well, Young. Mm. I'm fine if there's no WWE new content yeah. for the next couple of weeks, for the next couple of months. I'm fine. I <laughs> lived through the fact that there was no football for three months. Yeah. Well, okay. You look at like the um, SmackDown that just went by where they did like, they, they aired the Undertaker um, AJ Styles. Match. Yeah, Boneyard match, right? Do you reckon they did it on purpose just to kill time so that they wouldn't have a lot of stuff to do in the performance center because of what has happened? Or did they really want to do a Undertaker tribute? Nah, it, it, it yeah. felt so rushed and put together. It was yeah. really obvious that they were yeah. scrambling around mm. and there was a lot of um, segments that they wanted to do. They scrapped AJ Styles versus um, Drew Gulak. Yep, yep. Yeah, and that was right at the time where the, the news of Renee Young and the multiple other mm. uh, officials uh, having the virus came out. Yeah. Well, let's just hope it doesn't spread. And I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, like you said, lah, we're just thinking, you know, for the performers, can they stay healthy, continue doing this and stay healthy? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough because all it takes is just one person. If, if WWE is having their shows right now mm. in, in anywhere else in the world, I feel more comfortable. But right now, bro, Florida is having one of the biggest spikes yeah. in like a second wave of coronavirus. Yeah. So they are in the middle of like a cesspool right now. Yeah, they are the epicenter. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to talk about how they keep saying like, okay, their wrestlers are always tested, they're always tested. Mm. But these people, they're only tested at work. But once they finish work, you don't, mm -hmm. you, do you think they are quarantining themselves in the hotels? No. Nope. I'm sure not. Yeah. They're probably going to the clubs and the bars as well. Well, let's hope not. Lah. Let's hope they are responsible. But yeah, you never know. Like I said, only takes one. Only takes one. Then boom, 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 multiplies. And well, there you go. Now bro, that, I tell you, yeah. John Moxley, bro. If John Moxley can now positive, right? That's it. AEW that's it. shuts down. I mean, I don't know whether it shuts down, but it's going to be it's gonna be a huge dent in the industry. It's a big name. Mm. Came out and said they have the virus. But I believe that AEW can handle that situation much better than WWE. Yeah, for some reason, right? And you're right, you know, I think maybe it's this whole, um, AEW just seems a little bit more socially responsible. <laughs> That's the vibe they give me. Like they are smarter in that they know that, okay, yeah. we should do the right, like they would more likely do the right thing, I feel, than the mm -hmm, WWE. Mm -hmm. Or at least they give off the vibe that they would. Lah. They are yeah, more woke, yeah. I guess, is the, the, the term, you know? And, and like, like we said, bro, I'm completely fine if WWE shuts down mm. and get everyone quarantined, get everyone settled. Um, if, even if it takes a while, even if, it, bro, even in SummerSlam, there's no SummerSlam this year, it's fine. It's mm -hmm. fine. And I'm completely alright with not watching wrestling. Even if we just have to watch reruns of old Attitude Era shows, <laughs> I'll take that in a heartbeat, bro. Yeah, but they can't air that shit on uh, USA. Yeah, they're on US, yeah, yeah, they're on US. They can't you add that yeah. shit on USA anymore. So it's a weird situation. Lah. Like, I mean, yeah, you have to think about the money that's involved, especially with a three-hour Raw, two-hour NXT, two-hour uh, Fox, yeah. uh, SmackDown as well. So they are in a shit situation. No doubt about it. I don't know what they can do. Maybe, yeah, especially with Raw, because Raw is a huge problem. It's three hours of shit they need to do. It, it's a hole that um, they've dug for themselves and mm. really, I don't see any way out of it uh, unless miraculously this whole situation gets better and we know for a fact it ain't going to get better yeah. anytime soon. Uh, I think this is just a developing situation that we just have to keep an eye on. 
Like you mean if they qua- like they really contain it to just those three or four people lah. But yeah, like you you don't know until it breaks down and then that's it already. You know. Yeah, it it is so unstable. Uh, it's like on a precipice, you know. And mm. I'm really scared because if if for example, WWE right now have such a shit storm of bad press. Mm. There's no way out of it. Look going. There's no way to go out of it looking great. Like. When people look back at WWE's handling on the pandemic, they're not gonna say, "Oh, WWE did the, a great job in taking yeah. care of these people." Yeah. No way. So their their reputation uh. is damaged as it is. Right now, I believe in damage control. I believe, uh, a, as a wrestling fan, what we really want to see is WWE taking care of its wrestlers. If mm. they show, uh, you know, this propensity to value money over the wrestler's safety, mm. I think the fans have to come down hard and say, "Hey, you know, we like really don't watch." wrestling right now because Raw's ratings is the worst yeah and all time worst this past week mm. because like we are just so like honestly bro I have no interest in watching wrestling right now and this is as a wrestling fan right right well, no you interest see, in eyeballing the product yeah. even here's the thing here's the thing okay you say that because you are like myself you're a wrestling fan who is in the know so I guess smart is the word right but there's yep. still a lot of people out there who are just your you know, average wrestling fan who just tunes in, who isn't really privy to what's going on in the background. Those don't know about the whole you know, poor COVID testing and whatnot. They are the ones, and they're probably tuning up because of the number of talents that are you know, leaving or not coming up, uh, coming to work because of COVID-19. And mm-hmm. you know, just not enough programming, not enough talents to go around, lah, I guess. But ever, even if I'm a casual fan, mm. Um, if I, and if I switch on the TV and I see how wrestling is being presented right now in 2020, I'm not. I'm gonna tune out in within five minutes, bro. Yeah. So I honestly tried to sit through Raw, and just try to enjoy the show. Is I can't enjoy it. Does it? Uh, nothing compels me. Yeah. To be honest, I don't re- like. I'm now that you just brought up Raw. I'm trying to remember what happened on Raw. I'm like. Uh... There was there was a huge double main uh contract signing. Yes, contract signing. I, but but other than that. Like, there was so many people being used multiple times. They have to because they have three hours to fill. They have no not enough people because so many people is like either injured, quarantine, yeah. not coming to work. Screw it, lah. Just, just, it's a losing battle. Just play your best offs. Make it an hour and a half show and play the best matches of WrestleMania or some shit like that, you know? Uh, obviously, you know, we just we interviewed Good My Work recently and mm. I was watching one of his streams. Someone had a really great idea. Bro, just play a rerun of 1997 Raw. If if we play every single episode, right, according to the timeline, right, right now we are in the middle of the summer of like the Hart Foundation versus oh, like, you know, uh, yeah, the yeah. DX right now. It's, it's, gonna, it's a pretty awesome Raw. Yeah, right? I, yeah. But okay, okay. Let's play devil's advocate. What yeah. about the TV deal, the money? We've read before that they need to produce live programming or else the stations could drop them or they would be in breach of contract? I, I, I'm aware that one of the clauses in the contract was uh, something along the lines of they have to produce new content, new yeah. programming weekly, right? Mm-hmm. Completely agree that, you know, that there is definitely uh, a need to so-called produce shows. Yeah. But, right, I would take an NWA approach to this. NWA, okay. Yeah, okay. What, here, listen, here's what I mean, okay? Mm. You hear me out. Make it a very contained, controlled studio show. Mm. Like, you know how back in the day, and I think you would know. Isn't this what they're doing already? With no, no. the do, plexiglass? Do you remember, do you remember uh, maybe 1993, before Raw was even a thing? It was basically like a half-hour show uh, filled with like analysis and, you know, vignettes oh. and all that. And then yeah. the, at the end of the show, like, oh, we're going to have our specialty main event. Just a one-off match. Right, Just one right. match. You know, so yeah. it's like, it 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 kind of creates like a gap in between matches. Mm. It's not like ten matches within three hours. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the three hours, there's only one match each. It's like a pre-show, and then there's the matches. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, like so. In- what what we're trying to do is not about you know creating. Yeah, you you are still creating new content, mm. but you're limiting the number of people involved in the segment. Yeah. Uh, one-on-one matches. Cut it. With the, they have to play smart, lah. They can't do multi-man matches. Yeah. Okay, but the problem is, uh, they they might be like, okay, this format is not going to work because 
backstage is not doing well. In fact, it got cancelled because of low ratings, right? So this mm-hmm. whole sit around, talk up, like the, the talk show chat format might not work. They might be scared because, oh shit, it didn't do well at all on backstage on Fox. Mm-hmm. So they try to bring it here, it might just kill them. That is definitely a worry. Honestly, why do you think Backstage didn't do so well? Because I really enjoyed the show. As so did I, actually. But yeah. maybe the average viewer who is not a smart like us. Okay, we are talking like uh, people who love the business and like analysts, right? It's mm-hmm. the same for like football, like, you know, pre-shows. And okay, maybe football is a bad example because a lot of people love football. But do you think like out of the number of people who watch a football match, how many, what's the percentage of those who would watch a post and pre-game show and with an in-depth analysis all that? You know, like, I, I mm. would think it's a lot less. There definitely will be people who do it, but I dare say more people just tune in, oh, when the match starts or for the action versus, yep. oh, you know, who, what you think. And WWE is in that weird spot where, oh, so this whole thing is just a fake. Lah. It's, a, it's a work, lah. you know, when mm. you're talking mm. about a, a, sh- a, a work, so it still occupies that weird space and I don't know if the average um, person who just watches wrestling for wrestling and nothing else can understand or get that. Like we get it because we are like yeah. on another level. We are smarts. The, the, the reason why I feel that it's such a tough situation is because we don't have the answers. Because if we had the answers yeah, yeah. and WWE had the answers, they, they are doing it right now. They are, there is no playbook for this current situation. Mm. They are figuring shit out as it goes along. Yeah. And we are also, we are, we are criticizing as it goes along. Because we also do not know what's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. But we know what is the wrong thing to do. <laughs> we know what, is, what doesn't work. So but Then again, like, you, you compare that to AEW, it's just that they haven't gotten a, a case yet, you know? Because once they get one case, that's it. they also have to face the exact same problem one. Because their shows are just as you know, big and there's shit going on as the WWE show. So there's just no difference, really. One, one huge difference in AEW, and obviously, is the location. Honestly, I think the location mm. makes a huge world of difference. Not just in terms of presentation, bro. But it's also the, Florida, isn't it? Yeah, it's also Florida. But what yeah. I mean is the, the, the venue where you're having the shows. You look at Daily's place, right? It's a mm. huge amphitheater. It's a lot of space. Open air. Pe- people get so, so, um, social distance easily. Yeah. As compared to performance center, it's like a warehouse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I, it's just, I, you just have more faith in how AEW is going to pull this thing off. But how long can it ride for? Because the waves are not stopping. If the, no. if the waves in the US are going down, I feel more confident. But now, they, they are honestly in the, in the midst of a second wave. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like we say, like, there's no answer here. And whenever, like, okay, you know how they have said that, oh, those who don't want to work don't have to come into work. That's why we have had people, you know, not on our screens for a long time, like Roman Reigns, yeah. like Sami Zayn, stuff like that. But then you will always have people who are like, all right, this is my chance to shine. Let's take a yeah. risk. Let's take a gamble, right. you know? So these are all the right. ones who, well, we've been seeing. And you want to call them loyal? You want to call them you know, taking a chance to get their face out there? Whatever the case may be. Um, you can't fault them for it because at the end yep. of the day, it's the boss who says, yes, we go on. The show must go on. Yep. And, and I think at the end of the day, we just want to know that the wrestlers are safe. Mm. As safe as they can be because if their job is to give us entertainment because they talk about how WWE says um, people look up to them for entertainment. We are an outlet to escape from the world, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And as, as they try to sound so high and mighty and all that. But guys, we have other ways to entertain ourselves other than mm. wrestling and watching WWE. Trust me. WWE is like not the, the top most priority right now in a lot of people's minds. Mm. It's, uh, it, yeah. I mean, we can talk all we want. Lah. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, there is no real like solution to this. It yeah. just sucks that, you know, people have gotten sick there. Bro, it's, it's tough, man. Like, two weeks in a row right now, we've talked about very heavy topics on the podcast. Yeah. And the, the whole point of us doing the podcast is, you know, it's, it's a great escape. Mm. Wrestling is our great escape. But sometimes you can't escape from the world and pretend to be oblivious, oblivious at all, you know. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it borders on delusion mm. to act like that. So how long till we have the very first social distance match? 
You saw that video clip, right? Some indie promotion did a social distance match. <laughs> it's funny, bro. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, bro, I think Orange Cassidy is the best. La. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying like, how, how to combat this? They just have to ham it up. Play on the ridiculousness of pro wrestling. Okay, I don't know about that. Like, I don't want to see social distancing match on Raw or SmackDown or NXT and just like have people bump invisible bumps. Like no, no but but I would love more stadium stampede matches. I okay. think that would be awesome. Mm. Um, so what more? Um, because you know, coming up to backlash, we are going to get another cinematic match, and it's like I uh, don't know. Extreme like, rules, you mean? Yeah, extreme. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, uh, extreme rules. Yes, yeah. extreme rules. Uh, the swamp match or whatever the hell that is. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. I uh, I feel like they are running the risk of overdoing these matches. I really oh yeah, because every single pay per view there's been like a cinematic mm. match, right? And now I don't know if you noticed, uh, the past two pay per views have all had themes. Like it wasn't just backlash; it was backlash, the greatest wrestling match ever. Now mm. it's Extreme Rules, the mm. horror show. So it's like, yeah, so is that your theme this year? Every pay per view has a you know subtitle, a theme. Other than the theme, who else is gonna have an horror element to their gimmick? True. True. So, it's another case of this entire pay-per-view is based on one match, if you think about it. Um, that and the fact that I think, and I would, we've been, I mean, been cheating on WWE in the last couple of minutes, but I would give credit to WWE. Mm. They are trying their best yep. to be creative. They're trying to add new things. And mm-hmm. we could see that in today's um, NXT, uh, as well as AEW. Yes. yes, they have teams. So, it was a great American bash versus... Fighter Fest. Okay. But at least it's something different, right? I, I, okay, this is so obvious what WWE has done because they announced it after AEW announced Fighter Fest, right? So I'm like, why are they being... I, I don't know. Anyway, so Super yes. So obvious. <laughs> and it's not just like, oh, okay, this episode of NXT is Great American Bash. They're doing the exact same thing as Fighter Fest. It's two weeks of the Great American Bash. Yeah. It's yeah. like, um, what? I I'm know. curious though to see the ratings. Yeah. Because yeah. last week, out of nowhere... NXT beat, beat AEW. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, NXT has been picking up a lot of steam and I dare say NXT is the most entertaining product out there. To me anyway, because you know I'm a huge NXT fan, right? Yeah. Uh, as much as I, I enjoy AEW as well, I still, in my ranking, when I look forward to watching wrestling now, it's like NXT, AEW, and then like Raw and SmackDown. I would probably say SmackDown then Raw. For some really? reason, I, feel Smack, I enjoy SmackDown more than Raw. Okay, I think the problem with SmackDown for us anyway here in Singapore is that it happens on a Saturday morning and nah, I ain't waking up for that shit. I yeah. no, no. And on the replay, by the time, that's the problem with their social media. By the time afternoon rolls around, I know all the results. So I'm like, there's no need to watch. I log on to Instagram. Oh, there you go. Five posts all by WWE. Spoil everything. But it's okay. For me, it's fine that, that you know, you can't watch it. The timing's fine, all that. Mm. Uh, the results are there. But in terms of who, who is on the card, yeah. I feel I feel I enjoy seeing the you know the vibe of SmackDown more than Raw. Like I have the Daniel Bryans, I have AJ. now the AJ Styles. Yeah. Uh, Braun Strowman, to be fair, is a B plus champion. Not really interested in him. But yeah. we have people that you know make things fun like Miss and Morrison, mm. um, Otis. There's that's just there's such a good mix there. But on Raw, we always we just have Selena Vega and her. <laughs> Her band, her band of weird ass Latino brothers. Okay, um, I think SmackDown works because it's only two hours. Yeah, it gets tiresome because Raw is three hours, and yeah. like you said, it's the same few people over and over again on Raw, and they have been teasing this. Are they gonna break up? Are they not gonna break up? Break up? Not break up? It's like okay. What's, what? Who? Okay. Who's your favorite person on Raw? Who do you every time you, his segment you have to watch one? Shit. I know. Okay, you know what? You know what? This is going to be a surprise, I think. But I've been really enjoying Sasha and Bailey. Yeah. They, they've they essentially stolen the Iconics gimmick. Yeah, <laughs> this irritating duo. And somehow Bailey has just unlocked. I don't know. She leveled up. She, you know, she yeah, finally yeah, spent yeah. points in annoying <laughs> trade or whatever the heel trades are but like all of a sudden she's like up to her annoying level to like the next level and she's just such a strong irritating heel it's so interesting bro seeing how she was 
uh, such a good baby face. Yeah. And when she turned heel, everyone said, nah, doesn't mm. work. Well, it's so it weird. Took, took a while for her to find that next level. And now I feel like maybe it's because she's having fun working with her best friend, Sasha. And mm. Sasha is taking a back seat. If you notice, you should, yep. back then it was always Sasha in front, right? Now it's the other way around. And I, I find that work to be highly irritating and annoying. And, but, but, but in a good way. In, in a, a good way, yeah. Yeah, in a, oh shit, I want to see what other crap they pull. Yeah. And I feel bad for the Iconics because that was kind of the argument. <laughs> and now Iconics yeah. are just, you know, by the side. The, the thing about Iconics, I feel, is that they are great as a duo, but I don't see them standing out on their own. Um, I think... Everyone will agree that like Peyton Royce seems to be the one who could break out, but <laughs> they, okay, they they need more teams in the tag team division than they need individuals right now. True. So True. I think keep them the best as the best as they could. But honestly, uh, if I were to answer my own question, mm. to me, the most compelling person on Raw, as in the most compelling segment, and it's it's not really that high up from the rest. It's not mm. as if it's really outstanding. But I do enjoy Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. And only, only, only because I feel that I know the match is going to be kick-ass. Seth mm-hmm. Rollins and Rey Mysterio is going to be a badass match. Mm. But I feel that Seth Rollins, like like Bailey, has leveled up in terms of his heel persona. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not going to sing Burn It Down anymore because I don't think that fits him anymore. No. I it's like oh, him as this... Oh, yeah. You know, like this uh, very steady... Uh, he's not shouting. He's yeah. being very sure of himself, like that that Far Cry character lah. That yeah, villain. a bit yeah. of a like a preacher style. And I don't know if you noticed, but I and I don't know if he's doing this on purpose. But he's like got a bit of a gut nah. Like he he's no longer six pack Rollin. He's no Is longer it? CrossFit Jesus. No, yeah. He's like I don't know if he's done it on purpose for the look, but I think it works for him because you as a heel. I mean, not a gut, gut lah. Not like, Whoa, but you know, like he's not as ripped as he was. And I think it works for the character a lot more. Maybe he's just going for this rugged, uh, you know, backstab uh, in the woods kind of guy who doesn't yeah. really work out, but he's just a scary, imposing figure. Maybe. You know who should join yeah. him? Cameron Grimes. Oh yeah. Cameron Grimes is basically self Rollins if he let himself go a bit lah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but and, and 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 the reason why I like it is because there's a lot of new elements like mm. this Dominic Mysterio. I'm very curious to see him wrestle. Yeah, I want to see what he's all about. And they managed to still incorporate Humberto Carrillo. <laughs> and even Al- though unfortunately, yeah. Alistair Black is sort of in there as oh, like I'm a, a Mysterio afterthought. friend. Yeah, but I feel like he could be doing so much more. To be honest, of course, Alistair of Black. course. But but uh, you know, if, if beggars can't be choosers, I feel that okay lah. They are mm. they are having screen time, and I don't know, just just that collection of people fighting. Yeah, I I can imagine that like in a big arena is really pretty mm. exciting to watch. Um. Okay. What about Drew Dolph? Like, there's history there, like we talked about, right? But at mm-hmm. the end of the day, it still feels very like sub boss. You know, he's not going to win. He's just yeah. Gonna- Take we've talked about it. We've talked about it. Something like people are even like brushing aside, Drew, uh, Dolph, and talking about who is gonna be Drew McIntyre's some same opponent. Yeah, so yeah. I, mean, I feel very bad. I, I I kind of wish that WWE would just swerve us all and have Dolph win. Oh wow! But yeah, people will be outraged though. Never mind. Then let Drew chase, and then you know you build Drew up again. Drew, I think, I, is I, strong enough to honest, stand. Honestly, I don't mind. I would love. Uh, Dolph Ziggler title run at mm. in 2020 I think it's great um, honestly his work with Otis I enjoyed yeah, yeah. And, and it's kind of sad that he had to be separated but I think the story run is caused in a way well, um, well I mean someone brought this up online but what if Dolph beats Drew and then Otis uh, cashes in oh my god that's interesting yeah but WWE I don't trust them to be able to pull that off yeah and it is too early for Otis, isn't it? It's just way too early for him to win yeah, a so major early. title. And, and to be honest, and I don't know whether you feel the same way, but I think he kind of lost his steam and momentum a bit. Yeah, he, he did. feels like oh, okay, just a guy with a briefcase right now. With well, and Mandy Rose lah, and in fact, the Mandy Rose Sonia Deville story is more interesting now. Yeah, and and like and going back to my point about Raw, this there's a lot of figures. Mm. But I don't see like a centerpiece. I honestly thought Drew would be a great centerpiece. And I think he's he's trying, he's trying his best. Mm-hmm. Uh 
and I can't fault him for his effort. But because of the situation, the environment, and all that, yeah. I don't find his his part of you know the show compelling at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, uh, and the only way for him to be compelling, is he needs to have a very compelling villain. And the only one I can imagine is Randy Orton. Honestly, <laughs> but Randy, Randy Orton is busy. Is stuck, yeah, with with a very unnecessary feud. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean Edge or Big Show? Big Show, of course. Big Show, you know he is the like space filler for Edge to rest up. You know, like just kill some time. Oh, Randy needs a feud. Let him feud with um, uh, Big Show. You know, Big Show is gonna get punted in the head at some point. Yeah, that that's the problem. I feel that um, there's so many filler rivalries going on in mm. WWE, and I it's the time of the month lah. It's the time of the year where the well, summer and, seasons are well, very and there's know, also COVID. So yeah, it's so it's being doubled down. Yeah, it's a loud period in wrestling usually, and on top of it, COVID is gonna is making it even harder. Worse. Yeah, and we tr- we assume we like to assume that COVID is actually trying to force creativity out of WWE, but there's only so much that they can draw. Yeah, let's just be honest. Out of the entire WWE roster, I would say maybe thirty percent of the roster is really over with the fans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Over meaning these wrestlers when we when they come out. I generally want to watch them. Yeah. I generally can't wait to see what they do in the ring or on the bike. But how do you even judge over at this point when you can't hear the crowd? There is no crowd, you know? It's NXT, you, guys. You judge it purely by your own, um, how you feel about them. You know, like, okay, Randy Orton, there's no crowd, but he's doing the best work of his career. Mm-hmm. And he's only had two matches this year. I mean, mm. two matches, uh, you know, two big matches for, since WrestleMania onwards. Yeah. I know he's been doing great work. Mm-hmm. I know Ricochet right now won't be over with the crowd. Let's just uh, be honest, bro. He just went out and got destroyed by Bobby Lashley. Huh? There's another guy. Okay, MVP. Career resurgence. Doing great yeah. work as a manager. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I agree with you. Mm. I think this is the best he's ever looked. Even, I think he's doing even better than when he was US champion 10 years ago. Yeah. Because I find that his veteran vibes Mm. Like he's he got this cerebral uh intellect and these street smarts about him that yeah. was never really fully uh showcased in his initial run. Yeah. 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 Like now he really embodies the whole like I'm an agent manager of a top athlete and I'm gonna get the athlete everything he needs. Yeah, like so, a baller, you know, the, the yeah. rocks baller. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, gimmick. But at the end of the day, it's still thirty percent. Like top yeah. to bottom. Like one or two people, I really, really want to see what's going on. Mm. Honestly, MVP is one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who else? In terms, of what about the women's division? Like, okay, for NXT, uh, Io Shirai, uh, the main event of this week's NXT. Okay, Io Shirai and Sasha Banks. I've heard a lot of good things. I haven't watched NXT yet. Haven't had the time. The Great American yeah. Bash, but uh, apparently that uh, was a very good match. If the, if there's one match you need to watch this entire you know um, Thursday night war or Wednesday night war, is that match because I think that match was better than anything AEW put on and I yeah. I enjoy AEW yeah but it was better than anything AEW put on and yeah. there's there's a nice twist at the end which foreshadows a even better matchup down the road which I can't wait to watch that matchup as well. So you're talk, talking about Asuka coming out uh, and misting Sasha Banks right? Correct. Yeah. And it not only ties up, you know, the Asuka and Sasha Banks uh, matches, they're going to have the extreme moves. Mm. But you're looking at Asuka, Io Shirai versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. Oh, yeah. How awesome is that going to be? That is going to be amazing. Wait, is that happening? That tag team match? Uh, no, it hasn't been officially confirmed yet. But You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they announced it on Raw or something. I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes a special match on day two of a great American match. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But but you're right. Uh, in terms of the women's uh, division, obviously Asuka is holding it down raw. Mm. Io Shira is amazing as ever. Rhea Ripley kind of went down a bit. Yeah, now she's involved with uh, Robert Stone and uh, Lee. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. she beat them both. So it's like, wow, what, what a squash. Yeah. But I would like to think that I think... Rhea Ripley will come back in the title picture and have a feud with Io Shira going forward. Mm. But before that can happen, there was a new number one contender announced uh, in the NXT Women's Division because they had like, a fatal four-way match. Mm. Uh, so you probably eyeballed the, the results, right? Nope. Don't know. I didn't see that one. Who was it? Who yeah. Uh, Tegan Knox. 
Oh. Uh, and it was an elimination match. So, um, the so we first have a person... face-face uh, matchup. Yeah, so the first person eliminated, if I'm not wrong, um, actually, I can't remember, but there was the Mia, Mia Yim was part of the match. She got mm-hmm. eliminated. The last person that was eliminated was uh, the Kota Kai. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, Candice Larry was the first woman eliminated. Right. Um, so, Tigger Knox, very interesting proposition. Good way to build her up against Yoshi, right? Yeah. I, okay. The, my, my thing with Tigger Knox is I've never felt like a strong connection with Tigger Knox for whatever reason. She comes out, you know, she does her little hand signs and like, I don't know anything other than she got injured for a long time. That's all yeah. I know about. And she comes <laughs> out in Captain Marvel cosplay. That's about it. This, this is the time for her to like, Shine yeah. for us to get yeah. to know her as a person. Oh, and also getting backstabbed by Dakota Kai. That's all I know about her. Other than that, yeah. it's like, you, you, if you ask me to describe Tiger Knox, I'll be like, the captain Cap- of Team Kick. Yeah, Captain <laughs> the Marvel. Girl, the girl with the shiniest wizard. Yeah, like, huh? What? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. She doesn't have a very well defined formed character. But my favorite person right now in NXT is Dexter Loomis. Yeah. It's yeah. so easy to like immediately know what the hell he's about because of his facials, right? And there's an example of a guy who doesn't need to do a lot of things in the ring. He just mm-hmm. needs a few moves here and there. He has to play that whole monster thing. And you know, like Undertaker said in his uh, documentary, and we've said it a million times, especially for the big guys, even that just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Same as Goldberg, you know, he he was athletic enough to do top rope moves and shit like that. But the guys in the back were like, no, no. I think it was Eric Bischoff who told him, he's like, just, just do the, your three moves and that's it. Because mm-hmm. you don't need to do anything else. I bring that up because that's exactly what I thought when I saw Luchasaurus in the ring, this uh, Dynamite or uh, Fighter Fest. Yep. As we talk a little bit about AEW right now, like, I feel like a lot of the show this week were wrestlers who are good, but they're just overdoing it, putting out too many things. And this is something we've said about them for a long time. My who, biggest who a, about yeah, who's the a young great bucks. example? Who's a great example of um, someone in AW who, who is getting the right mix, where they're not overdoing their character, mm-hmm. just in the sweet spot? <laughs> Chris Jericho. Uh... <laughs> that one goes without saying. Yeah, yeah. That right mix. Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Because like, when I... Remember, we were so high on Luchasaurus for so long. Mm. Mm-hmm. And now when I watch his matches, I understand why he's just not there. He's not there yet because he's doing all these like very athletic moves, but you're doing it too much. You know, like mm-hmm. a standing moonsault. And a lot of the time, he just waits for the move to happen. And him, uh, and, okay. like him and Wardlow or him versus um, uh, MJF. It's like, Okay, I can see why he needs a bit more time to get more fluid, more chemistry with some of the other workers in there. You know, you know who I honestly thought had a very good grasp of his character? Who? But we saw very little of him ever since. Lance, Lance Archer. Oh, he, he's involved in something with uh, Joey Janela now. Him, yeah, very random. Very yeah, random. Joey Janela apparently is hanging out with Sunny Kiss. So, yep. I... I, so, I, I uh, all of that storyline build has been happening in AEW Dark, which I don't yeah. watch. Yeah. So uh, they are just randomly fighting, in my opinion. But the thing is, huh. they had such a great storyline going into the TNT Championship. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, okay, yeah, it's fair that they lost. Fine, put Cody as the first champion. But they had so much momentum. I wish they don't let it fizzle out. Yeah. So you see how many people were wasted right now? Yeah. Uh, Lance Archer, Brody Lee. Well, Sean that one, Spears. That one not considered wasted. He's trash to begin with, so, you know. No. <laughs> now, yeah, now he's doing something with Coke Cabana, which is so random. Actually, you know what? I don't hate it. I don't hate the whole Coke Cabana. Is he joining yeah, all the Dark rec- Order? All this recruitment yeah. that's going on? Like, I don't hate it as a mid-card feud. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the random shit we used to see on during the Attitude Era. La. Like, like choppy choppy or pp that level of nonsense it's like oh, okay this is nonsense but it's at least like oh it's something interesting yeah. outside of the main event you know and and why i feel that lance archer is such a he's such a well rounded character mm. like i like lance archer and jake's uh, jake the snake as a, a duo as a combination right mm. uh even much more than i like Tess and brian cage mm. but for me the reason why is because 
like I think we've talked about it before, but Les Archer does bring a certain level of madness, yes. like real yeah. potential violence. You know the way he carries himself, the way he throws it around the ring. But for Tez and Brian Cage, yeah, Tez brings the intensity. I think he's a great promo guy, great manager in that sense. Um, but he is carrying the intensity for do- for that duo. Yeah, I don't think Brian Cage is that scary. Yeah, even though he's jacked, he's built like a sh- like a brick house, right? But yeah, he is like a cuddly bear. <laughs> He gives off that like, vibe. Like, okay, bro. Honestly, he got the same, to me, uh, potential to be like a killer, scary guy like a Ken Shamrock. Mm. Because the way he carries himself, the way he looks, if he just changed his facials a bit, <laughs> I don't know, in terms of his intensity, yeah. like, bro, when you look at Ken Shamrock, uh, when he screams, I you know, before he goes to the room, like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, bro, he's gonna... Just well, okay. Someone right now. To be fair, Ken Shamrock had the whole world's dangerous man thing going for him. He's like a you know UFC mixed martial arts guy as well, so he has that. But okay, what 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 vibe. is Brian Cage's nickname then? The Machine, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, what, he's what, basically what is copying Tez's gimmick. He, yeah, 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 like Tez human Tez suplex is, machine. Yeah, Tez is just bestowing all his uh, well, okay, catchphrases on him. There's a difference between the human suplex machine and the machine. The machine means nothing. It says nothing about him. What does it mean? No, whereas the human suplex, oh shit, you go in there, he's going to throw you all manner of ways, right? So at least they, like, that defined him. And that was his whole gimmick that he could suplex you, bone suplex, exploder suplex, tass plex, whatever plex. Yep. Whereas Brian Cage is just a machine. What the I'm fuck very, does that mean? I'm, I'm just very curious in AEW's booking because... They are lining up all these so-called very big, huge guys against John Moxley, right? Uh, Brody Lee and then now Brian Cage. But they all come in without any build-up. Yeah. No, no, you know, no heat around them. You know, there's no reason, clout to watch them. Isn't that the issue? Like, they've done it so many times already. Okay, Brody Lee, right? You talk about Lance Archer. Comes in with all this quote-unquote hype. Got Jake the Snake and everything. Looks the part. Is menacing. Can go in the ring. And then he loses to Cody and that's it. He hit the ceiling and straight down. Now he's fucking with Joey Janela for God's sakes. They are launching too many people too fast and pushing them to the main event too fast. I honestly don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is that they get to the main event and then immediately drop straight, slide straight down the card. Have them, yeah. like, I don't know why that feud isn't continuing. Like, oh, Lance Archer lost to Cody and oh, I give up. I give up on the TNT. The shit. Yeah, why can't title. it run for like multiple yeah. pay per views? Instead, uh, you have Cody versus, uh, who did he fight? Jake Hager. Jake Hager, yeah. Okay, I guess Jake Hager is another one. Poor thing. He gets like to the main event level, it loses, and then just, you know, like he's sort of kind of there, like that yeah. mid-cut, yeah. upper mid-cut. He, he was challenging for the title with Moxley. Another one went down Yeah, the mid-cut. They, they have are this, not yeah. keeping the momentum of each wrestler. Mm. Which is very, I, I don't understand it. Like, well, in a way, I feel like, and maybe this is just me not liking Cody, but... I feel like just Cody is just hogging the limelight with that TNT, the incomplete title. Which I don't understand why it's still incomplete, by the way. Isn't everything bloody open now? In Florida? I don't know, man. He's aren't, trying, okay. Aren't he, they rich he, enough to hire somebody to just come in to do it? Like, what's going on? It, it, it's, it's interesting, like, because I think AEW has their own flaws, yeah. but their flaws and issues are so different from WWE. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know. Um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel like WWE's flaws are just a lot of stupid stupidity. PR's gone wrong or just yeah, shitty yeah. decisions? Just a lot of stupidity and like very, um, they're just unaware of their own issues. Yeah. But AEW is just trying too hard to be smart and work and we get you, but then they just book themselves into this very weird corner where they just try to be too smart for their own good. Yeah. I think okay, yeah. the smartest thing they've done is putting Chris Jericho on commentary as much as possible. Like to me, that is the bright spot of um AEW. Like you know me, mm-hmm. I'm a huge Chris Jericho fan, but setting that aside, like him on commentary just shitting on Excalibur every chance he gets is the best. <laughs> calling him a must idiot. The must idiot. idiot. Uh calling Tony Shivani Skivon. Uh, and you can tell you he know- respects JR because he never talks back to JR. <laughs> JR was the one that hired him, right? Yeah, that's true. You know, okay, 
I don't to, in today's like broadcast of Fighter Fest, right? He really reminded me of like a a very young Bobby the Brain Heenan. Mm, as a heel, Heenan. Yeah, as a heel announcer, he was so good at it. But he also knows when to like sort of like give credit. Give credit, even if it's to the good guys. He knows how to put people over. I guess is what I'm trying to say, while still maintaining his character being a heel. So, I mean, it's brilliant, lah. He's so he's evolved his career so much from a wrestler and then he become a rock star and then you know that he's going to have a career in this business forever because once Bro, he calls it quits he's going to be a commentator for sure whatever role that he's being put in mm. I think he has kicked ass his excel whether yeah. it's like the first champion whether it's like the leader of his inner circle group mm-hmm. uh, whether he's trying to put over young talent now being a commentator I think honestly if Chris Jericho left AEW today yeah. No, I don't think it. I'll be watching AEW that much yeah, anymore. Yeah. Honestly, even yeah. though they have a lot of other great wrestlers, mm. a lot of people are like, I mean, Kenny Omega, come on, I mean, I'm a fan of him. Yeah. Hangman Beach, all great. But, it's like, okay, for example, after Stone Cold left, a lot mm. of people left wrestling. Yeah. In terms of watching it. Like, I know friends who are like, oh, Stone Cold is not in wrestling anymore. Okay, never mind, I don't want to watch anymore. Yeah. It's, that's the kind of impact that Chris Jericho would have. If Chris mm-hmm. Jericho leaves AEW, I don't see anyone who can replace him in terms of entertainment value, in terms of, you know, like being compelling antagonist. Yeah. Um, he's just a very vital part of the product. Um, and, and that is honestly what's missing with WWE right now. That one... Um, guy or gal, right? Who's so super compelling, super over. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they are in that position where, you know, they have to find that person out of this whole chaos. So many people are not coming into work. Rightfully so. But, uh, and the last criticism I would probably say about WWE is, there is no drive from the wrestlers to be that kind of character like Chris Jericho. Mm. Because... Chris Jericho is really invested in AEW and making them succeed. Yes, yes There's yes. no wrestler in WWE that I look at them that, wow, they really want WWE mm-hmm. to succeed and they're going to do whatever the 100% to make this thing, this place like, you know, uh, a great destination for fans to watch. The could last you, person... Could you argue honestly, that Seth is that guy now? He's the company man? Uh, in his current... No, well, um, I mean, he, 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 in his role, he's still like, you know... Yeah, I guess even, okay, let's say if the whole Seth Rollins, Rey Mysterio thing wasn't happening, I guess, yeah, you're right though. Like, I wouldn't miss it. The last person, honestly, and this is a very interesting realization Mm -hmm. that I can see really cares about WWE, wants to make it the best product ever. And I feel that, you know, uh, there is so, yes, yes, you got it. Mm -hmm. Like, every time he comes out, his passion for the business, um, and his investment in WWE makes me care about WWE. Mm, yeah. John Cena. Can't, John Cena. See, can't see him now. Can't see him and, now. Well, okay. I mean, but we discussed this with uh, Greg from uh, Good Mike Work Commentaries as well. In that if anybody reaches that level, WWE will just push them right back down because they are in a position where they can't afford to just rely on one person. Mm-hmm. They need everybody to sort of have made it there and then come, you know, or, okay, fine. You're a former champion, whatever. So that, they are never left in that situation like with Stone Cold. When Stone Cold left, The Rock left, all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, we have to build new talent. And, and this is the weird thing. As much as WWE wants to be the star, mm. I think wrestling is very different from pro, uh, other sports because sports, other sports are team sports, right? Mm. One star leaves, you can re- regrow and rebuild. And like for example, Liverpool will always be Liverpool regardless mm. of who leaves. Okay. But well, wrestling, I don't think that's the case. You see, I beg to differ because you look at sports like the UFC, you look at sports like even basketball as well, right? Yeah. Um, UFC, once Ronda left and Conor McGregor, like, ah, called it quits, right? Their viewership went... Yeah. It was built around those few guys and it took them a very long time to build it back up. Yep. You know? Um, The NBA as well, like when Michael Jordan retired, like nobody gave a crap about the Chicago Bulls anymore. Yep, yep. Uh, but and and the the point I'm trying to come across for wrestling is mm. wrestling is a stars driven business. There's no such thing as if all the stars leave. Oh, I'm gonna watch WWE because I like WWE. Mm. I don't like WWE. I like the stars that I support in WWE. Well, yeah, but no, you know, like I will still watch. Like when I think wrestling, I'll still watch WWE, even if there's no 
you know. But I, I know what you mean. Like, for the mainstream sort of a casual fan, you need they need stuff. they need to create a cast of characters where, yes, they can they can rely on the name of WrestleMania. Mm. But after WrestleMania is taken out of the context, who am I watching WrestleMania for? Yeah. Not every wrestling show will have that um, appeal where people don't even care who's on the card. It's WrestleMania. Mm. I'm just gonna book. Right, but right, right. the rest of the year, I want to see like a rise of Daniel Bryan's storyline. I want to see Roman Reigns' redemption. I want to see Randy Orton being a veteran killer. Yeah. You know, all these stories is the thing that the Fiend made it so compelling to just watch his segment, mm. which is just a one segment in Raw for for four months before he debut. Like, if all these things don't exist, and I, and I don't see them being invested in their own character and their own product, I won't give a shit. Like, you also agree, what right? Randy Orton mm. was really guilty of coasting for a long part of his career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He didn't give a shit. I didn't give a shit about him also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. So, and that's why like, when John Cena when became the US champion, mm. I gave a shit about the US title scene. Right. So, is that combination also, is that magic combination of somebody who's super invested in it, talented, charismatic enough? Because, you know, you look at Apollo Crews, he looks like he's very invested and he's super into, but do you tune in for Apollo Crews? Give me, give me six months. See where, <laughs> where, where it leads. You know the story, where the story leads. Yeah. Uh, so I, you I, need I, that combination of everything. You need the WWE pushing the shit out of you. You need to be good in the ring. You need to be compelling as a person and as a storyteller. And that that just this X factor that you know we've seen so many talented wrestlers come and go, but they just never like sort of you know made it yeah. to that next level. Yeah. Um. And honestly, I feel Roman Reigns can be that guy once he comes back. Mm. Um, not, and I won't be that, you know, one of those fans that say, oh, he needs to turn heel to be compelling. No, I don't think so. No. I just think that he needs to be himself mm-hmm. and let him be able to verbally spar with the audience, verbally well, spar with people yeah. in his own way. The Roman Reigns became really, really compelling when he had a feud with John Cena. And John Cena mm. started calling out him on his bullshit. And yeah. how he can't cut it as a full time blah blah blah. I give a shit about Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. So it's all about the conflict and the stories. If you care and the the performers care, like when Randy and H, I see that they care about their rivalry. I care about your rivalry. Right, right. I think unfortunately, with where we are, mm-hmm. what's going on in the world, everyone is sort of in the holding pattern. Long. I mean, you. I honestly do see like that passion and drive you're talking about in Drew. Like you can yeah. tell that he yeah. cares, and every yeah. time he interacts with the camera and he's doing his thing, right? But, but, and there's always a but, and unfortunately, his title reign will be the one with the asterisk. But, mm-hmm. you know, our crowd's really gonna react to him. He hasn't had that. I I, I believe feud. I believe they will, and the only way to make to bring him to that next level, he needs. A Vince McMahon to go against, to oppose. He needs a, mm. a villain to oppose him as yeah. equally as compelling. So they can't, in the going forward, they can't just build one star. They need to build one star and one great adversary. The only compelling heel they have on Raw right now is Seth. But they, they, they use up that feud too early. Yeah. Just okay. a one off, money in the bank, and that's it. <sighs> well, maybe they want to revisit it when audiences can come back in. I don't know. But- like we said, like everything seems to be in a holding pattern because they know that they can't do anything major because they want to save the major stuff for when people can come back. But when will, when will people come back? And that's, that's the question on everyone's minds. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, we still watch, we still enjoy the product, but... Yeah. It's, it's yeah. been tough. La. It, I mean, okay, for, for, for those of you listening, uh, especially, uh, please, please share with us your comments because it, it's wrestling very hard to watch right now. Do you feel... Um, less passionate about the product are you are you turned off by the things that you read <laughs> because honestly there's a section of people who watch wrestling uh, who have been trying to be loyal to wrestling all these mm. years this is a especially hard year it just sucks yeah. it just sucks to watch yeah. it um, I feel like NXT and AEW those are a joy to watch I look forward to watching those Raw yeah. and Smackdown seem more like a chore like okay I have to watch because you know I do a podcast about pro wrestling so I need to know what the hell is going on yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said too, like, you know, Bailey and Sasha, MVP, um, 
I don't know what it is about Drew. Like I say, when I see him, it's okay. Yeah, he's really trying. He's trying his best. You know, it's compelling stuff. But I don't look forward to it. Like, oh, I want to see what Drew does next. I don't care. I don't know what it is about that uh, character that doesn't work. I, I honestly want to see what Randy Orton does next. Yeah, Randy and... Well, okay, not with Big Show. I could... Uh, I feel bad and, for and saying I this. I argue yeah. that Randy is the only one that can make seeing what Big Show does very compelling. <laughs> honestly, like his promo last week, yeah. I was like, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. What's going to go on with Big Show? But that, then again, that's the magic of a wrestler. If a wrestler is able to be so compelling that whatever mm-hmm. he does, mm-hmm. whatever segment he's in, I want to see what happens, that's when you know that he has reached that league's level. So, okay, looking forward then, next week on The Great American Bash Part 2, yep. we have uh, winner take all, Adam Cole versus Keith Lee. That's something mm-hmm. definitely, uh, you know, we'll be interested that, to watch. But, okay, here's the thing, how is this going to play out? Because, what, is Keith Lee going to get both titles or Adam Cole get both titles? Are they going to hot shot Keith Lee to one of the Raw or SmackDown brands? Or Smalls finish so nobody wins in anything. Because it's winner take all. Eh? Um, it will be a very random way to lose the title, especially after his long reign. But I honestly don't see where else can Adam Cole go. Where else can Adam Cole go after after he fights Keith Lee? Exactly. Sorry, I got distracted because I, I I'm hearing something in the background. And uh-huh. then I realized it's one of those political broadcasts, like a truck that drives by and then vote oh. for yeah. So Is I believe your area? Is yeah. it your neighborhood? I can hear it. Nice. So they're like driving around right now with the, the broadcast. Uh, vote for her. her. <laughs> I, well, uh, okay, I won't ask what's your GRC. Maybe that's like very personal information. It's fine. But, it's uh, 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 Bishan Topayo. Oh, Bishan Topayo. So yes. my, my, mine is smack dab in between East Coast GRC and Alternate GRC. So technically you are what? So that means I can gerrymander and go one side and it's... Huh? Can man, your polling card will tell you one thing. What? No lah. Uh, okay, so... I can tell you, share a bit of my personal stuff. So, I, my blo- address, my blog address is not this current house that I stay. Oh. Yeah, because I stay in a rental place, right? So, I stay with my brothers. Okay. But my, my, my parents, uh, they stay in Hague Road. So, they stay in Geelong area. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, the, basically, I changed my, uh, recently, I changed my address to not reflect that I'm from here. Mm. Uh, so, uh, under my address, I'm, uh, technically alternate GRC. Oh, okay. Yeah. But under uh, the address that where I, I'm staying, mm. the one that is not on my IC, yeah. I'm on East Coast. So, yeah, it's not, obviously, I will choose, uh, I'll be using, uh, voting alternate, but yeah, yeah. I'm very, very much aware what's going on in East in Coast. East Coast, right. You know? I see, I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a random turn. Sorry about that interruption. <laughs> no, no, it's okay, it's okay. But speaking of politics, the politics of Keith Lee, <laughs> and Adam Cole. Yeah. What does it mean for Adam Cole to beat Keith Lee? Because uh, if, if that's the case, well, are they going to wait for Karen Cross? Because Karen Cross is the very, very wild horse that is part of this whole combination right now, in my opinion. Okay, my prediction is Karen Cross comes out and destroys both of them. That's Schmoz la. Schmoz la, yeah. You can't have Schmoz ending. like one person holding both belts, right? Like who would it be? If there was one person to read, I honestly didn't think it should be Keith Lee, though. Really? Like, I feel like it's too much, too fast. Like, I, I don't want to overdo it for Keith Lee. I won't... I won't... back um, Adam Cole to win. La. That's mm. all I can say. That's oh. all I know for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. So, you are thinking that Adam Cole is going to lose the NXT title? I'm thinking that he won't come out of this match being coming the victor. How and when that happens... Whether that's Karen Cross, I'm giving myself a lot of leeway. Yeah, so that, basket. You know? <laughs> that just means he, he, who, Keith Lee must win, what? Because it's winner take all. Eh? It's not like one title on the line. It's both titles on the line. Yeah, but but if you use that Keith, uh, Karen Cross theory, he can destroy the whole situation, what? Yeah, schmoz, and, no? so schmoz essentially no? a schmoz. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like that is the logical thing to do, but we'll see. That, that that's the most compelling match to me on NXT Great American Bash. But what about Fighter Fest next week? Um, so we will finally have Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy. I mean, kudos to Chris Jericho for making this actually like, okay, I want to see this match. I want to see what goes down. Because, you know, yeah. the beat down, they juiced um, Orange Cassidy. Orange previously. juice. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him some orange juice. Yeah. And then in this week's episode as well, like Orange Cassidy just took a chair set by the commentary booth and yeah, yeah. randomly Chris Jericho insult him. It was, it was, 
No, I, I like how when Chris, Chris Jericho wanted to stand up and try to beat him up, yeah. and he just casually walks away, yeah, and then yeah. he gets ambushed yeah, yeah, by yeah. everyone that beats up Chris Jericho. I think that's really smart. Yeah, and then of course, uh, Chris Jericho wearing a Canada jacket because it's Canada Day, and he's like... Mm. Making yep. all these funny references. Such I, an obnoxious guy. That was my like favorite thing about the entire episode. It was Chris Jericho. Mm-hmm. It was yep. all Chris Jericho. The wrestling. Oh, I have to bring this up, man. Um, I'm. I like that they're pushing Penelope Ford and Hikaru Shida. Mm-hmm. You get to see more of their characters, but their in ring needs work, man. They need more time to. Who's Who's the guilty party? Both. I think both of them. I don't know if they just don't have very great chemistry or what, but they need time to work because yeah, it's yeah. just, oh, that match was a bit rough. There were a lot of moments where I was like, okay, I wait, I wait for you, you wait for me. You, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, okay. Same with Luchasaurus as well. It's like, hmm. I, th- I think one thing I miss about live wrestling, mm. I feel that having the crowd can distract you from all this kind of very obvious cues, you know? Yeah. 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 Or like, or like just, there's, if there's other things going on to distract you, you know, the crowd chanting or whatever that's going on, I would probably not realize it, but I completely agree. Uh, this is the time where you really have to step out your technical ability. You have to mm-hmm. make sure you're crisp and smooth in the ring yeah. because we will definitely see because that's the only thing we are focusing on right now. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, oh, and then there's a huge tag team match, uh, you know, the revival. Yep. Yep. Uh, eh, Revival, Revival and the Bucks versus Oh, that's next week. Yes, the versus eight man, the, the eight man match, right? Yeah, the the Butcher the, and the Blade. Yeah, Butcher Blade and oh my god, I can't remember their names. The What's the, the Death Triangle minus one. <laughs> the Lucha oh, Bros. Lucha Bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be a fun match. That'll be a fun match. Um I think AW Dynamite ended in ended on a cliffhanger because um it was Adam, a big... Yeah. Hangman Page and Omega versus Best Friends, right? And yeah. they won. Yeah. But FTR came out. Young Bucks came out. Curious oh, to see like, faces. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, curious to see what's going to happen going forward. Do you know there's going to be that huge Young Bucks and FTR match? Yeah, um, it's down the line. La. Correct. But uh, before that, I think FTR is going to have a, have a match with the Lucha Bros as well. Yeah, that would be very point. interesting. Yeah. Well, That'll I mean, this is obviously the start towards you know getting there. Right now, they do an eight-man first. No, mm. I, I want to see how FTR teach the Lucha Brothers how to, you know, <laughs> I think that will be yeah. very exciting and very fun. Yeah, that will. So yeah, there, there is some bright spots here and there in wrestling. Uh, it's not all doom and gloom, even mm-hmm. though uh, we, 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 we definitely pointed out all the weak, weak parts and all the issues in the industry right now. Yeah. If there's one like parting, last parting thought I would want to leave you with and the audience with is that now wrestling is in a very weird Recipes because it's not just the COVID, bro. Mm. There's the the old generation of attitude era people are definitely all going away. I think Undertaker is like one of the last few ones. Right now, now, now the ruthless aggression wrestlers are the veterans. Yeah, they are the ones that technically the legends right now. Mm. And let's be really, really honest. Not all of them are the most compelling characters. Yeah, true. So, so right now, there's it's really a chance to establish a lot of these new wrestlers and make them have fans. It's like, make us want to care about them as fans. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm a bit worried. I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm also quite worried. I'm worried because, uh, well, what if wrestling is go- gonna be so lame <laughs> and boring and like not compelling that it will drive someone like us away? Because I've never had a break from wrestling, bro. You've had a break. You yeah, had yeah. your break from wrestling. Where you completely like, I'm just sick of this product. Yeah, yeah. And what got you back? Was it? It's definitely not CM Punk because he was during no. the part time you took a break. So what? What was it that brought you back? It was the live show. They were coming to Singapore, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, 2015. And I was like, okay, let's just watch a little bit of it just to catch up, you know? Because I used to be mm-hmm. such a huge fan, right? So you immediately recognize certain people, and then once you get on that bandwagon, and yeah, like with Dolph Ziggler coming down, I got to interview him, hang out with him, and everything. So it's like. That was my impetus to get back into watching wrestling. Did you, did you say that to Dolph? Like you said, hey, I used to watch wrestling but I haven't watched in a while. Of course not. La. What the hell? No, you never uncut. When, when, no, la. when I talked to him, I literally, legit like, okay, like, you know, like I've been, I have never left as a uh, loyal okay, fan, okay. right? But, okay, but when you came back, right, that means you missed like the formation of the shield, am I right? Yes, mo- you the missed- formation, the yes movement. 
you miss the the Bray Wyatt and all his nonsense that he did early on in his career. Uh, yeah, the early stuff. Now I caught the tail end with the Raw where when he moved out to the main roster. That Bray okay, Wyatt. so 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 yeah. I'm just curious. When you came back, that was probably about 2015. Mm. Who among the new people Sally you you had a connection with? Like, hey, I want to check this out. This guy's good. I like him. Blah blah blah. Oh, oh shit. Like this is for probably like Seth Rollins and his authority days, right? Yeah, I remember enjoying Seth Rollins as the you know coward heel, you know, in the uh-huh. authority. But then you had Randy Orton in there as well. He was part of the authority, right? Yeah. So you relied on that ruthless aggression era character. Uh, that familiarity was there, lah. Yeah. So you always have to have a mix, uh. That's the whole point. That's why they keep bringing Ric Flair back, you know, mm. to get that. Mm. Oh, I remember this guy. Oh, now he's like you know so old. We, we need the rub, lah. I agree. Mm. And and that's my fear because I, if this 2020 situation doesn't get better, I feel myself losing interest in wrestling. And not, we can't, not to bro. the sense we watch, we do a podcast. That's impossible. yeah, I know, and that's crazy. And this is like the most biggest like twist of this podcast. Right? Suddenly we're mm. like, hey guys, I'm tired. One day we just announced we are sick of wrestling, man. It sucks right now. Yeah. Uh, okay, bye. That's the end. Yeah. <laughs> Last episode, we no now we are a mixed martial arts podcast because <laughs> UFC oh, is uh, still going on. That would, that would be damn funny if we make a poll. Uh. Should we become a MMA podcast? Like all the fans all leave also. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but 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 what I'm trying to say is if I were to leave and take a break right now, five mm. years. Five years? And for example, for example, yeah, okay. for, you got very scared there. Right, for, yeah, like, no, if, if, I, if I were to leave, I don't see anything that would bring me back. Like, unless it's like, like your situation where it was an accidental uh, actual wrestling. Say, hey, come on, let's watch the wrestling again. Yeah, let's yeah. see what's going on. Like, there will be nothing that bring you back that is compelling because the last person I had a big connection with other than Randy Otto was CM Punk. Mm. Everything from the shield onwards, I don't really care. Like John Moxley, maybe early on when Double or Nothing, when he when he first come came back, I was like, "Whoa, what's happening?" Very exciting. Yeah. Now, not so much. Yeah. So it's gonna be tough, lah. And I hope the new newer fans, younger fans than me, who like grew up on this era, they give me a reason to get excited. Young bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I well, have no idea about that. This is this generation's wrestler, you know? The mm-hmm. internet generation's wrestlers. Yeah. Can you it's gonna, it's gonna be exciting, like. it's gonna be interesting and um let's see, let's see what's going on uh, next week, bro. Yeah, I mean we're getting closer to extreme rules and of course, um actually that's like two weeks away, right? Yeah. Yeah, two weeks away. Mid July. Mid July. I mean there are developments still to come like what will Dolph Ziggler pick as the stipulation for Dolph versus Drew yeah and um, I think we are quite curious to see how wrestling is going to restart uh, here in Singapore local promotions mm. as well uh, we might have some interviewers lined mm. up yeah I'm working really hard like, to try, try to secure <laughs> well, some people in, in terms of like the live show I don't think it will happen unless they do a closed door show as well even yeah. then even then I feel like you know Nobody, it's going to be tough. Yeah, nobody's going to take the risk. But um, good news is this weekend, uh, certain like amusement parks are opening. USS is opening again. Mm-hmm. Uh, museums are opening again. Yeah. It's gradual. It's gradual. Give it another couple of months. Let's see what's... Uh, the moment you know there's going to be a, like a live sporting event or like a mm. live concert or what, open open uh, festival or like those Pasar Malam kind of shit, uh, then you know. Things are going back yeah. to normal, inching I mean, back to normalcy. Inching, yeah. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there, you know, as long as we do our part la, and wear a mask. Yep. God damn it, Karen, wear a mask. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, with that, though, um, okay, next week, Great American Bash Part 2, Fight mm-hmm. Fest Part 2, I'll Fight for the Fallen one week after that. And- yep. There is still wrestling to look forward to. Yeah. But I understand, you know, if the, the interest is waning here and there because we feel it too. I think we, we, are, mm. we have to be really honest with ourselves. Yeah. If we feel that wrestling is having a dip, we would say. And, and it, it is. It is what it is. You know what the crazy unfortunate thing is? Yeah. Sometimes, if, if that's the case, right? Okay, I'll just play the WWE 2K game. Uh. But the latest 2K game is the shit <laughs> as well. So we are like screwed either way, you know? And I don't... I kind of don't want to go back to 2K19 and have to recreate certain characters who are new, you know? Well, I mean, I'm enjoying 2K19, bro. I haven't finished career mode yet. <laughs> What's up with that? That was so long ago. 
Okay, I mean, I mean, I'll do it now, bro. I I got some free time after this. Oh God, okay. Come, let's stream that. Actually, maybe that should be our next episode. We stream WWE oh 2019. If, if you can somehow figure it out, bro, that'll be damn funny. We react to stupid what would 2K we play? 20 shit. What will we play? No lah, we play 2K20 lah. Oh, 20. <laughs> I, I, I freaking deleted it from my PlayStation already, bro. <laughs> bro, that's got like 60% off or something coming up. They have a deal. They really want us to buy it back. You, they should be selling it for $5 or giving it free at this they point. They should pay us $5. <laughs> yeah, right? Play. For a bloody broken game. But uh, I, I don't know. Like, even if we were to play it together, like the what? The um, universe, not universe mode, the other one. Career mode. Career mode, yeah. Also, it would, the loading times and the sh- shitty acting and everything. I don't think I could su- survive that. Bro, you try uh, You try to do your own uh, Facebook stream, stream and see whether you enjoy it. Uh, I think I wouldn't. I didn't even enjoy it playing myself, let alone playing it online, you know? That's why you have to play it together with me and then we shit on it while we're playing it and then we record Oh, ourselves. wow. Uh, what, universe mode? Uh? Uh, okay. No, we, we, like, we create our own pay-per-view. La. No, the problem is, right? Like, oh. it will glitch in universe mode. Like, when I try to create my own card and everything, and the thing will cock up, man. It will hang. Uh. It will do bullshit. So, I'm like, ah, fuck. La. Time to bring up. back 2K19. We will have a fun time playing 2K19. Because I know I enjoyed myself. Screw it, it. Let's find an emulator and play SmackDown. Here comes the pain. Ooh. How about that? Retro gaming uh, session. Like, uh, up, up, down, down. Does. Let's make it happen, bro. Let's talk offline. <laughs> Let's do that. In the meantime, right. though, thank you very much for following the podcast. If you're listening to this on Spotify, uh, iTunes, uh, App, not iTunes, Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, whatever the case may be, hey, thank you. We appreciate it. We're now on YouTube. Yep. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy and please subscribe uh, to us on YouTube. Leave a like, leave a comment. I don't know how all these YouTube things work. Uh, <laughs> you know, please help us grow because if we can grow, we got some money and then we can make better content, right? If yeah, not, yeah. I'm just going to be stuck in my room in this uh, prison, prison-like prison uh, conditions. <laughs> <laughs> wow, eh. So, okay, we need to set up a GoFundMe or a wish list or something. Yeah, for help, so foreign, he... help foreign level up so you can get Mr. Young's kind of equipment. <laughs> Thanks, uh, guys. Just, yeah, we need a mic, maybe a ring light on him so that, you know, he yeah. looks like fancy, fancy. And then, uh, uh, or, 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 just, or just find me a new room. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, follow us on um, Facebook, on YouTube. It's all kicked to the gut. You can find us, slide into our DMs if you have any questions for us or you want to say hi. Hey, we'd love to, you know, chat and everything. In the meantime, though, it is Mr. Young. And it's for in the building, bro. Yeah. Take care. Wash your hands and put on your goddamn masks, Karen. Make yourself famous. Bye, bye, bye.